Hi right, folks, welcome to this next model um, of the trading block series, right? We started a series um, um, some weeks back and this is the continuation of the series, right? Today we'll be talking about the other blocks, right? I started with the breakout blocks, then went over to the mitigation blocks and today we'll be treating one of the widely misunderstood concepts, which is what the, the other blocks, right? All right, so other blocks. This is one of the uh, blocks in which you have to understand when you're trading the financial market, right? So other blocks. Now, what is another block? So for me, this is the definition I usually give as another block. Another block, let's follow my definition. Another block is the change in the state of price delivery. Right. So this is what another block is, the change in the state of price delivery, right? Then what does this look like on the rate chart, right? So we have defined the other block as the change in the state of price delivery. Then what do we mean? Because this English, this definition does not necessarily have any correlation with price pattern, right? So we're looking at the chart, for instance, um, this is a chart right here. So you see a chart right here. So now we're looking at the chart. What do we mean by change in the state of price delivery? What is being delivered and how did it change states? All right. So that's basically what we'll be treating today. All right. So now in the native term or bringing it down to the charts, when we have um, two types of other blocks, we have two types of other blocks, the bullish and the bearish. Right, so for the bullish order block, right? so the, for the bullish OB, right, it is the last down, the last bear candle, or the last down close candle, right? Or I think bracket, bearish candle. Before, an impulsive rise, what? Rally. All right, so that is what it is. The last down close candle before an impulsive price rally. All right, so that's what a bullish order block leaves, right? So uh, I will show that in charts in a moment in GIF. All right, so the last down close candle what do we mean by down close candle? A down close candle is a bearish candle. Why is this a bearish candle? Look at this. So look at the chart here. Look at this. So for a down close candle, you can see that, um, look at this, this is a bearish candle now. So look at this candle. This is the open of this candle here. And then where did it close? Down. So a bearish candle is usually a down close candle. Why a bullish candle is usually an up close candle? I mean, and it closes up. Why the bearish candle was closest below, right? That's what it means. Down close candle, up close candle, right? So that being said, we have understood that. So now is the last down close candle or bearish candle before an impulsive price rally to the upside, right? So to the upside, right? So that's what the bullish OB is. And then we can also just clone that, right? So this this also implies to a bearish OB. Right? The bearish OB is just the reverse of everything we have been saying. Right? Follow me closing. So a bearish OB just have to edit, just have to edit some things here. So we have the bearish OB, bearish order block is the last so what up close candle, just the reverse. All right, up close candle, or what bullish candle before an impulsive price rally towards the downside. Now, I almost add this information. This is where many people get what. An order block is not necessarily, follow me. It isn't necessarily the very last candle 
eight could be a series of candles. I swear, it's when people get hot. It's not always necessarily, it's not necessarily the last, very last candle. It could be a series of candles. Sometimes an other block on the one hour can be two candles on the 15 minutes time frame. Another block on the 30 minutes could be um, four candles on the five minutes time frame. So have that in mind. It's not necessarily the very last candle, right? It could be a series of candles, about three candles, about four candles, and all of that. So we have gotten all this definition right, in our hearts. And then that being said, we can now, you know, move over to charts. Right. That means you can move over to charts. So now we have gotten that. So let us start with the bullish order block, right? So we say that the bullish shadow block is the last down close candle or bearish candle before a price rally towards the upside, right? Why the down bearish OB is the last of close candle before an impulsive rally towards the downside, right? So we have gotten all these definitions. So now we can go to chart, right? So let's take out all of this. We need to go back there if you want to have access to that. Or should we load it up on this new um, screen? Let's see if we can load it up on this new screen. So we don't have to, you know, delete all we have been working on, all right? I think so. No, so let's see. All right, it's, lo it's loaded up, right? So here's the USD Canadian dollar. And all right, so this is the three minutes. This is going to look like a four hour. All right, let's illustrate this, right? All right, so here's the USD card. And now let us see how this thing has been panning out. So looking at these charts, you can see that the market has been what's impulsive, right? So you can see, I've seen an impulsive. Um, market. What do I mean? Okay, we have seen a relatively upward impulsive market. What do I mean? Look at this chart. The concern that the market has been trending to the upside, right? Although we have had um little retracement and all of that sort, but then this market has been what bull um relatively what bullish. So now look at the bearish shadow block. Okay, so we have this last up up close candle. You can see if we extend to the future, you can see what happened. So after this last up candle, what do we have? That was an impulsive rally to the downside. Look at it, an impulsive rally to the downside, right? So that's another block right here. Then let's look again. So we have another one here. Is I'm not showing you examples of bullish order block. I will teach you how to make this profitable. So we had what another what last up close candle before what an impulsive rally to the downside. The price come back there. Mm -hmm. So price came back here, tapped it. And Went below, right? You can see how this has been panning out, right? So, do we have another other block here? So, look at another one here. Look at it. Last up candle before this impulsive rally. So, the price come back there. It did. So, look at this candle closely. Look what happened there. Let us just take our price data to this point, right? This way, you will get a little bit um, less, um, funny, right? So, now look at this. Now, this is the other block. The price get to the very open loop. Then if you check the three hour time frame, you might see what happened there. So let's check the three hour time frame, all right? So this is the three hour time frame. So look at it. If you play the very last of candle, right? Would you have expected? Nope. So looking at this chart, you can see that these three candles, right? We are all um one other block. We had one, two, three, right? So for me, I would have, drawn from the very low of this candle notice other block is the change in the state of price delivery so for you to accurately get other block if it's not so clear on the bigger time frame you can come down to the smaller time frame and then mark from where that impulsive run started and this was where that run started so the market opened the close below opened the drop down and then after it dropped down we had this impulsive up candles three up candles and then price was displaced to the downside for me this would have been my other block right from this very low here so if you go to the two hour time frame, I'm just showing you what I've just said. Wow, it's very clear. Can you see what I've been saying? So on the two hour time frame, you can see that it's actually what one candle. So this was the, the other block. Can you see it? So you have to learn how to go through time frames. If it's not clear on the four hour, like on the four hour, it wasn't very clear, right? It wasn't very clear. You would play the open of this candle, you would have been, you wouldn't have got activated. For the three hour time frame, you would have been very confused because you've seen three candles. Now, if, if I've so, sort of been telling you that a Another block can be one candle on another time frame. And if you go to the two hour, it was actually one candle. You can see it's one candle and then the, the bearish run. So that last up candle before this bearish run is your other block. 
If you go to the one hour time frame, look at it. Let's see if it was there. You can see that on that block, it actually was two candles. One, two. So those two impulsive candles are what your other block follow me. So it's not necessarily the last up candle. It could be two candles, three candles. Just understand that it is the last run. Let's measure from where you saw that last retracement and then the impulsive runs. That gives you what your other block, right? So that we have gotten three examples of um, a bearish other block. Let's see if we can find bullish other blocks, right? So we might need to um, skip this um, replay and let's go to the future, right? So now looking at this, we have to look for what bullish or the blocks, right? This is for the bullish other blocks now. Now remember, it's the last down candle before what the impulsive run. Remember what the finish run is the last what? It's what the last down close candle before or bearish candle was before what? And if an impulsive price rally to the upside. So looking at this now, we have what? This was what? That last down close candle or it should be just for this very well so we had this very last down close candle what before what they run to the outside so it's not necessarily one candle so looking at this would you pick this candles other block or this one it's best you do is to pick the two because other blocks may not necessarily be one candle so that's the other block right and price price come there yes so that very last down candle so this was the very last was down candle before what this impulsive run right so this is it so moves like why didn't you pick here why didn't you pick here why didn't you pick there now if you pick here this was not actually impossible so if you pick here okay we had this candle that was so all this range but when this particular candle printed what happened impossible runs. and what validates an other block is an, a presence of an imbalance or an impulsive rally so we can see that after this printed was there an imbalance here i can see one so from here this is please now. So we had was an imbalance right here. So this was what validated was this other block, right? So imbalance present. So this was other block, bullish other block, right? So now let's see if we can find another bullish other block, right? Is it whether it's only only you you um use the card, right? To see. If you can just use one chart just to you know, kill this bird, right? So look at it here. Look at another other block here. So last down candle was before impulsive rally. The price come back there, it did. Ben. Other block. Right? So look at another one here. A last down close candle before what impulsive run. Did we have? Right? So. So. You can see how these things are panning out, right? So now we have seen what another blocks look like. And now the question is, how do we trade an other block profitably? Right now, this is what many people don't really know. The thing that is just knowing is the last up close candle, last down close candle, and all of that. Now there's a way to actually make use of an other block. Number one, you want to understand what's the higher time frame structure or bias, right? So this is how to make your other block right. Now look at this chart carefully. Now, you can see that it's not all other blocks that actually play. For instance, if you chose this other block, you chose here, you can see that it's actually played. But now we'll see who, another one. So if we chose this other block, so we had this last oh, candle before was the impulsive downward downward. So the price respected, no, just was gave rejection and it was it blasted through. All right. So that's a way to know if an other block will hold or if it's not hold. And these are the things I want to teach you. Number one, how to um, maximize other blocks. You want to understand the higher time frame structure and directional bias. So it's different between structure and data bias. So the structure is just higher, 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 low, lower, high, lower, low. And then directional bias is when you identify liquidity and imbalances. You want to know where price is gravitating towards, all right? So what do I mean? Now, Let's look at this chart clearly, clearly. Now look at this candle, look at this chart closely. Now, we had another block at this point here, and then look what happened. There was another what, other block right here, right? So there was another other block somewhere around there, okay? And okay. And as I can see, there was also a kind of weak um, four-hour level here. It was kind of level at this point here, kind of S and D zone here. 
So that was a kind of um, we, uh, four hour zone. Why? Because you can see price projecting all for this particular zone, right? And they had another block from below here. Although they did not get there, but this zone was what stopped price from rallying the upwards, right? So now look what happened. Now, for you to, for you to understand what the market is doing, now this market was trending downwards and we what hit a major what a major um zone, a major flip zone. So when markets hit this flip zone, what happened? The market did was it broke structure to the upside. So at this point here, when the market went above this high, right? Markets in a bearish market, market should not go above the previous highs. So the market broke above this previous high automatically. This market was bullish. Remember what a break of structure is or change of character is. Price should not you know, get above the previous high. So you know that in a bearish market, you should have a series of lower highs and lower lows, right? So when the market goes above the previous high, that is automatically what a bullish break. So at this point here, there was a bullish break. And this was what invalidated was this other block. Follow me. So another block is invalidated when it is not in line with what the trend or the structure of the market. So at this point here, this was not going to hold, right? So I wouldn't have sold it when I saw was this was bullish break. All right. So that is it. First thing you must identify the higher time frame structure and bias. Now, another thing about another block is number two. You must understand what's the range of the market. So you want to understand the range or the current range of the market, right? So what do I mean by range? Is the is the distance between the last uh, higher high and higher low or lower high and lower low? So let's go back to this point. So looking at this chart now, the, uh, from this point here, from here. Right from that point, from this point, our range was where look at it. So, from this point, our range was from, from this low what to this high. Yeah, so from this low to this high, that was our range, right? So, what happened when the market uh, went higher and broke structure automatically at this point here? We now had what a new range, so somewhere around here. We had a new range. Let us play it a bit. Right. So I think I should go to two or three hour time frame. Right. So let me just jump it back there so we can see this thing clearly. So when the market went above that point here, so at this point here, when the market broke this lower high, here, we now had was a new range. And this new range was not a bearish range. It's now became what a bullish range. So now we have a bullish range. We should we be looking to buy in a bullish range? I don't think so. So should we be looking to what buy in a bullish range? I mean to um sell in a bullish order. So should we be looking to, to sell in a bullish range? So this market was giving us a break, and then we had what a bullish. Range. So we're looking for what buy opportunities. And did he give one? So after the market broke higher, did it come back? Uh no, it didn't come back. It just was aggressively up, up, up and drop and drop and drop. So right, although I can see a kind of entry here. Uh, this was a kind of, you know, this was a kind of uh, bear, um, bullish breaker, right? It gave an entry. So now we had what that bullish range. Market was bullish. So I was not into towards service market. And then what happened? Market went higher. So this was this would have been your entry. You know, breaker blocks that last up candle before that do that swing and then they break the So if you play this candle, you'd have got something better than this candle, right? So this particular candle would have been your entry. This candle, right? This last up, um, up candle. Maybe the, the high of it or whatever, just so yeah, that be entry classical support and resistance, right? So, get my point. So, we have gotten that, and then what makes another block high probability? So, we have gotten those two things, all right? Then the next thing we we'll see, what we we'll see, the presence of an imbalance, right? So, the presence of an imbalance makes another block vibe. So, let's share this thing. This is for the free YouTube community. So, what we we'll see that was imbalance validating what the other block. So, it helps to validate another block and right, so you must understand the structure of the higher time frame the range and then we will see that imbalance supporting that okay this is another block that needs to be what mitigated you want to see price you know, weaken into that candle or range around that candle right so this is part of why this is not look at this looking at this candle yes it was the last uppermost candle but looking at this there was no imbalance look at it this was properly filled you saw the market you know weakening into it there was no imbalance just Move around the candle, right? So it's no imbalance around that candle validating what that's other block. So you want to see an imbalance, although it's not always the case, 
but imbalances help to what validate the other block when it's in line with structure and all of that. So let's go to the data entry. Now we have seen how the other blocks pan out. So let us look at some um, examples of how these things were actually uh, beautiful. The best part of this class is when you do what you actually go to your chart and practice these things I'm giving you. All right. So let's delete all this. So this is a USD card. Okay. Let's go to USD chef. So now we have all of this. And let us go back to this point here. Now, looking at this, what do we have here? Price was in what? Gravitating towards the upside. And what happened? Price would do what? If you are trying to sell this market, because people would have seen this as a sell opportunity when they saw this um, rejection candles here, and then they would have looked at it as what a sell opportunity. And what did price do? Price traded above that and what gave that impulsive run to the downside, right? And what happened? There was what a break of structure. Because market took out this low and then took out this other block. Here. Market breaking a, an other block is also a break of structure, right? When the market breaks a previous other block, it's also early a kind of break of structure, giving you a total sign of price is likely going towards the opposite direction, right? So now we have our market take out this low. So market should do that, taking out this swing below. So we have this, you saw the swing below taking out. So we have a break of market structure, this other block taken out too. So we had that. And then look at this market has done what taking out all the highs here. So all this has been captured. So there's no reason for market to do was continue um buying. So since we saw that we have not simply done what done was highlighted the open of this candle, maybe the lower weekly how you prefer. So if you, if you highlighted the open of that candle, that would have been your other block for entry, right? So the price come back there. So what do you do? You wait. So we want to see some of the bigger time range different. So price took a while, and then the price come back there, it bam, it did. So price came in towards that other block. Right. So if you check, maybe let's say let's check the, the 21 hour time frame. Let's see there was an imbalance in the other block. Right? Was that an imbalance there? Oh um, yeah, there was an imbalance inside the other block. Where is the imbalance? From here down to here. So it was a kind of tiny imbalance with the two hour time frame by right? that gap between this and it was what inside that other block, right? So bam, price filled the imbalance and it was what happened next? What happened next? Price it up, it sold. So when the price comes to your bigger time frame in um, other block, it's your duty to go to the lower time frame to confirm your entries. I'm not going to teach lower time frame confirmation here, right? I've thought that in previous videos, and if you want to learn more, join my mentorship academy, right? So that's where we teach traders how to trade themselves and make money of the market. And we have um, about three or four funded traders, some of them are five figure traders, and they're doing very well. Right, the ones that are um that are actually um um doing the profit because my profit academy I advise that if you learn how to trade, there's no point trading with your hundred dollars or two dollars. Go for big accounts and make good returns, right? So it's easier to blow a ten dollar account or a hundred dollar account than it is to blow a bigger account, right? So that profit is there that supports all of that, right? So that's being said. So we had that other block. So if right here you have gone towards the lower time frame confirmation, and then. We have got, gotten a short opportunity, and that was it. So now we had that break. I will go back to the daily time frame now. What again do we see here? We, we, we play again, right? Right now, at this point here, we saw price do what? We saw price take out was this low. So we had another break of social here. And where, where did that occur? Inside it. So this last candle would have been the other block. After that, it's not necessary. Let's go to 21 hour time frame to see if you can see it clearly. Let us see that last impulsive run. So looking at this, okay, markets open the air, drop down, then bust crazily. So this would have been another block. But markets actually dropped down to this point. I said buying heavily from it. So this was that last upward move before what that displacement the downside. So that was my other block. So I would have highlighted this as my other block. Was there an imbalance inside there? I can see one. A very large imbalance. So there was an imbalance all, all over here. So the imbalance was all over here. So the imbalance was all over that point. Validating what that other block, right? The price come back there, it did. So, let's see. So, I had a break of straw here, and the price come back there. So, that was the you see, price came back there. Right? There was still an imbalance here. Right? So, let's see. Did it come back there? 
but I can see an inducement there. Yeah. So, it was a very beautiful trade. And that was it. So, price broke this low right here. Price broke that low. There's another break at this point here. And what the price, the price was came back without that block. Just tapped the low of the candle and that. That was a beautiful setup, right? Beautiful setup. Now, looking at this, we had what this break. Now, let us see, check another one. There was another what last up candle before what this break. So we had what another break of structure right here. And then this was what that last up candle, right? The price come here, yes, did reject it. Yes, nice, beautiful sell, and price with those. We had it lower. All right. So this is how this has been out. Now we can see a bridge of that block here. What happened there after this can't be printed? What happened? We saw what this heavy push the upside. And was there a kind of break? Yes. Market will took out this this high. So that's why market is rejecting objects. Market is coming back to those. So I saw that block over there. My other block here was printed, which was mitigated, and our price is reacting off this other block as well. Right? Remember this candle took out liquidity and that is why markets return up here. So this was it for me. I would have gone with what the bearish one because the markets you have to use the trend of the market to do us know which one to play, right? So let us look at EU if we can find any other block that actually gave a beautiful entry. So let's go to the um, daily time frame and see. Or let's go to GU rather. So G. So let's just look at the, the DBP USD. Let's go to three hour time frame, right? So my son's on three hour. Market has been crazy bearish. On the British pounds and then the United States dollars, right? So it's been a very bearish market. So let's see if we can find other blocks that actually play that, right? We might need to go to the two hour time frame to see if we can find one or two, and then we'll end the video. And I'm going to go back a tiny bit. All right, so I can see one here. What happened there? This last up candle. And what after it happened, there was a break of lows, and what price it came back to its beautiful self, bear. We had a lower, right? So that is it. That is it. That is it. So these are the span out, right? I can see another other block here. Last of candle before what this heavy sell price came back there. Bear. So what am I saying? To maximize other blocks, you must learn how to use the higher time frame structure, right? So use the higher time frame structure. So use a high time frame structure and you know know how to play these things out, right? So other blocks are beautiful if you find them on the bigger time frame, although they also pan out on the small time frame, right? If you have a bigger time frame bias, then you can use small time frame to those. Like look at look at a beautiful setup here. Now look at this, it was British pounds and then the meter setup. This was 10 minutes time frame. So this is also applied to 10 minutes time frame, but you must know the higher time frame directional bias. So we had what a bearish market at the bigger time frame. And then we had this. So liquidity was grabbed here. So all these highs were captured, right? So we had all these highs captured here. And what happened? We had as last up can before the break of structure. So that was a broad, a break of structure at this point. Here. So this was given that tell us the market was do was go lower. So after that, from we had what this was our last up candle. So those are that last up close candle. Yeah. Right. So market was came back there and then sold. Now you know they have taken these loads there. Price hit the middle and then selling ever since then. Price fell how many peaks from there? So price from here down to this point, price has fallen um, 498 pips, right? That was a beautiful trade. If you caught it, well done, right? So this might be the end of this video. Um, a, a little announcement. Our mentorship program is still ongoing. If you want to be part of it, of it, just use the link in the description to join us, right? We have classes every week and all of that, right? So see you guys in the next video. Have a wonderful day. I hope this video was insightful. So until next time, please like this video, share this video, cheers, and God bless.